Today being Thursday, the 21st of March, I'm here in the front of this beautiful building, Central Police, where you can cry here in Grand Bahama. Boy, this is a beautiful building. We just dream of having something like this in Abaco. Abaco, look at they got better police car than these. These cars are called breakup. But this is a huge, beautiful building here in Grand Bahama. And I'm here on this complex reporting Superintendent Wendell Clark. Um, I'm one of those guys that in the mix of trying to make Abaco great again, and lo and behold, the powers to be send us Wendell Clark that's trying to destroy the little good name that the police has in Abaco. Last Monday, Wendell Clark locked me up for resisting arrest, disorderly behavior, and for calling him a drunk, so I smell rum on him. And I saw him at the airport here just now. We boss up again. Um, he's looking for me. Somebody must have told him that I was coming to Freeport to report him. So lo and behold, the first person I saw when I come off the plane was Superintendent Wendell Clark. Again, I could smell rum, got his head hold on, boss straight up again. This is what they sent us to Abaco. And I'm here to report to his boss that we don't need this in Abaco. We need him to come out of Abaco. And the interesting part of Wendell Clark is to date, Wendell Clark tried again to intimidate Kai Mills by having his police serve me with a summons. And guess what the summons says? To how Kai Mills to keep the peace towards uh, superintendent of police, a guy who got the badge, a guy that has a gun, a guy that has his law degree. You think Kai gonna come up against that? The peace is already has been kept. But what the lawyer that don't wanna be a police trying to do is trying to intimidate me and to use the martial of a court house like a circus like they always do. Just put the charges on you, you figure it out. No investigation. How could it be to all the good superintendent of police in this country that a civilian is being brought before the courts by a superintendent of police to keep the peace when if there is any crime committed, the police has all the power to lock up. But you see, when the clerk already made that mistake, he already locked me up without any charges that could stick. He said that I resisted arrest. That is easy to do because he was drunk. So easily could yock him down. That is not a problem. But I didn't resist arrest because he said he was a lawyer. He would never identify himself as a police officer. And number one, if you never place me under arrest, how could I resist? There has to be these words, I place you under arrest. And there has to be a reason for placing me under arrest, Mr. Lawyer, Police Superintendent Van the Clark. That is why I put money out of pocket, got on the plane and in Grand Bahama tonight to report you to somebody that knows about your drinking problem. See, you as a lawyer, but you need to understand these big words. A, A, find it while it can be fine. You're not gonna intimidate Kai Mills. When this story is complete, I will still be in Abaco, and you will be out of Abaco. Remember, to date, some big names get sent at home, and I'm gonna use all my video power to let the commissioner of police know that we don't need a drunk police in charge of Abaco. And especially one that arbitrarily take away my freedom without any evidence, without any witness, just because he have the power. That is too much power for somebody who needs to visit AA daily. That is why I'm here in Grand Bahama. And you imagine a superintendent gonna carry you the car to buy you over to keep the peace? just trying to justify 
his ill doings last Monday. The video is at the airport. I have the video, and I want to know, when did Kai resist arrest? When was Kai placed under arrest? When did Wendell Clark identify himself as a police? All his claim to fame is he's a lawyer, but we've seen many of them come and go, also policemen. So I am here to give a statement on the corrupt practices I've seen. And while I'm here, I'll also let the police know of the lady that came into the police station while I was there to report her daughter missing from 3 o'clock to school, and she never catch up with her till 3.30 that night. You have the uh, book, so who the policeman was on duty, 3.30 in the morning. The lady brought the girl there, 12 years old. The police went and picked up the girl that had sex with her. The police asked her, did you have sex with this girl? Yes. Do you know that she's underage? Yes. How long have you been having sex with her? Over six months. That is rape. When they ask the girl, how old are you? I am 19 years old. Do you know that this girl can't give consent for sex? She said yes. And this was the disturbing part of it is, the police at the station said to her, go home, do not contact this girl again. If you do, we will lock you up. The question is, if that would have been a 19 year old man, boy, would he got the same treatment? We saw the report in the last Thursday issue of the Tribune on the sexual misconduct in Abaco. Could it be that the police has also helped to contribute to this? By letting this female go, how many other young girls she had sex with under the age, bringing them into the life of lesbianess, training them at the age 11, 12, and the police turn a blind eye. All I could hear the police say, boy, she's a pretty girl. We can see what we can do with that. And let her go. That. It's what happened in the Marsh Harbor Police Station last Monday. Then another damning thing I'm here to report. While lock up, there's a Haitian boy that was there. He could speak very little English. The four of us sitting on the bench there, and the police came there and said him, say, you had a good mind, put a shot in his head. I'm looking at the boy, says, you hear what he said? The other three boys that were there locked up with me. Then he said, I said, put one in your head and just kill you. We look at each other, then I intervene. I said, officer, if you would have said that on the outside, you would be locked up and remanded for threats of death. Surely, you're not talking to him. You're trying to send a message to me? Because that boy hardly could speak English. So you're trying to say to Kai Mills, you'll put a bullet in my head? Say it to me. But what you just did that just now, that's a crime. You threatened to kill an inmate for no reason, and we got four witnesses here. This is what Clark should be attending to. Police threatened to kill inmates, and policemen letting rapists, lesbian rapists, that rape 11, 12 year old girl all night. The mother couldn't find her until 3.30, and the police finally got the rapists, and they tell her, go home, while they got Kai Mills locked up false, ill-advised, unfounded charges of resisting arrest from a police that everybody in Abaco now know is an alcoholic. Every club you go to is outside, hardly could walk. That needs to be addressed. That is why I'm in Grand Bahama. Kai cares. That's why I spend my money to try to make Abaco great again, to get Superintendent Vendor Clark the AA in out of Abaco. Kai Cares, live. You only get it here on WCAY in Grand Bahama. This beautiful complex that we just dream that we could have in Abaco. And everybody that got a complaint against the police, I will give you the name, the number, 
who to contact because they have a boss and crime that is committed by police in uniform is unacceptable. Unacceptable. That is why I spend my time and my money thirsty after being threatened again by a lawyer, Superintendent Mendel Clark. I came here to put him in his place. You're live, WCAY, Freeport, Grand Bahama, where Wendell Clark ought to have stayed. He should have never left down here. Here is where they could watch him, in Abaco. Too much liquors, too much clubs, too much rum. Kai Kiss, Freeport, Grand Bahama.